Okay. Okay. So we're going to look at four problems, two of which involve Newton's third law and the other two which involve gravity. So the main equations to look at from the bottom are right here. This is Newton's third law. We'll use this to calculate um, mass or acceleration. You know to use this equation if two masses are provided or two accelerations are provided and whichever of those four is not provided will be asked for. These aren't really mathematical or they're not really equations, but these top three are. So this is for when you have, well, there will be some mention of gravitational force and there will be two objects that are pulling on one another with gravity. So two planets or even like a pen and a cup of water could be pulling on each other with gravity. Um, this also gives you gravitational force, but you can only use it if G is given. So like it says here, um, well this, this, I guess another way, a better way to say this is near, like it says on, the, on right down there, near surface of planet. So if I'm on Earth, I would use 9.8 for little g. If I'm on Saturn, it's something like 10.3 that you would plug in for a little g. On the moon, little g is like 1.6. Um, so if you have a value for little g, you can use this to calculate gravitational force. And of course, that's how you calculate little g if you don't know it. So basically, this is how they calculated 9.8 on Earth. They took the mass of the Earth, they took the radius of the Earth, and they use the universal constant that Isaac, I believe Isaac Newton figured out that number. Uh, I will provide that as well. I forgot to put it on this paper. That's the number, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, no matter where. So 9.8 is only true near Earth's surface. This is true no matter where you are. Now that's pretty confusing. It'll be more clear if we actually look at some problems. So you don't have to write down the question. Just write down the solution. Just write down the, the work and the answer. So here we go. Consider a bowling ball that strikes a single pin, like this picture up here. The 5.4 kilogram bowling ball experiences an acceleration of negative 6.67 and the pin experiences an acceleration of 3.34. Calculate the mass of the pin. Now for these problems, the best thing to do is to label anything you've got. So blow up the chat for me here. If I see kilograms, what does that thing represent? Very good. Awesome. That's the mass. I'll keep going. The ball experiences an acceleration of this. Clearly that's acceleration because they straight up set it. And also it's meters per second squared. The pin experiences an acceleration of 3.34. Hey, there's another acceleration. And they say calculate the mass of the pin. Now, like I said, if you've got two accelerations and two masses, you know that it's the equation that has two accelerations and two masses. Ooh, that should be two. The only real challenge here is organizing the information. Basically, what you do is you name one of the objects. So I'll say the bowling ball is object number one and the pin is object number two. So since the bowling ball is object number one, the, the bowling ball information will go on this side. It'll be 5.4 for the mass of the bowling ball. The acceleration of the bowling ball is also given, negative 0 0.667.
we're trying to calculate the mass of the pin, so I'll leave m in there. And I believe the acceleration of the pin was given. Let's see. The pin accelerate ex, the pin experiences an acceleration of 3.34. There it is. So I don't really know what else to say about this problem. I welcome your questions because this it seems pretty easy to me. Um, but if you need some guidance there, let me know what's challenging. What's, what's challenging? Is it picking numbers, figuring out where to place them, finding the equation? But we'll go ahead and solve. Um, first thing to do would be to simplify on the left there. Take 5.4 times 5.4 times negative. Well, let me get my other paper. I don't even have it anymore. Here it is. 5 point, negative 5.4. Oh, 5.4 times negative 0.667. So that'll be negative 3.602. I kind of like to have the number in front, and with multiplication, you can just switch them around. So we'll do negative 3.34. M2, and we divide both sides by negative 3.34. So we'll get 1.08. A pretty common mistake is to forget the negative up here at the front, and that'll cause you to have a negative answer, but mass is always positive. So if you accidentally get a negative mass, and you're not sure exactly what you did wrong, and you run out of time, just put down a positive answer. So in red here, you don't have to write this part down, but it might be a good idea. Mass is always positive. And that's it for that one. I'll read the next one while people copy down. And actually, as I go, I'm going to go ahead and label. It's good to annotate. Two astronauts of differing mass push off of one another while floating freely in space. If the acceleration of the 60 kilogram astronaut is three meters per second squared, so the acceleration is three. It's kind of written backwards. There's M, uh, this acceleration is three, so that's A. What is the acceleration of the 50 kilogram astronaut? So it looks like they're asking us to calculate acceleration. What is the acceleration of who? Of the 50 kilogram astronaut. And there it is. It's written quite nicely here because the numbers are in order almost entirely of how we can write them in the equation. So I'll just say this guy over here is astronaut one. So we'll say that's M1, A1, and this will be A2. M2. Although I didn't say it yet, I hope it's pretty obvious we're using the same equation. We have two M's and two A's. So the logical thing would be to choose the equation that has all four of those. M1A1 equals negative M2A2. So it's pretty much the same as the last problem. And I think the math will actually be even easier. 60 times 3 equals negative 50 times A2. Well, 60 times 3 is 180. I'll just keep that in my brain. You can kind of type it in all at once. 60 times 30 over negative 50. That's uh, not subtracting. I'm not subtracting 50. Maybe I'll put that in parentheses. 60 times 30 divided by negative 50. And we'll get 
our final answer will be negative 3.6 metros por segundo a la dos. Now, if you get a negative answer for mass, you know that's incorrect. But acceleration has the possibility of being negative. So a little detail to remember would just be that A1 and A2 are always opposite. So the 60 kilogram guy accelerates to the right in the positive direction. Um, I'm not sure which way my video points. Oh yeah, okay, I'm not even, okay. The 60 kilogram guy points to the, uh, accelerates to the right, and so the other astronaut will accelerate to the left. So for a Newton's third law problem, A1 and A2 are always opposite in sign. One will be positive, one will be negative. So if I got a positive answer here, I would know that's wrong because this one's positive already. Our final answer would have to be negative. I appreciate some feedback in the chat. How easy is this? Five is super easy, three is medium, one is pretty tough. How would you rate it? Cool. Message privately if you don't uh, if you don't want to share. Mostly fives. That's great. If A1 is negative, is A2 positive? Yes. Great question. If A1 is negative, then A2 would be positive. <laughs> we got someone saying six. Okay, good. I thought they were easy too, but wasn't sure. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the feedback. I don't like this problem, so I'm not going to do it first. I'm going to do number five first. I think it's cooler. Okay. Mars has a mass of 6.46 times 10 to the 23rd kilograms. And Mars has a radius of 3.39 times 10 to the 6th meters. I don't think I need to draw it, but I will. Here's what they're saying. They're giving us the radius. Um, and they want to know what is little g if someone is standing on the planet. Um, the, the thing that I think might throw people off is they say, here's a here's trick. It says, what's the acceleration? Someone might say, oh, we're, we're trying to calculate a. No, sir. The question is, what is the acceleration due to gravity? So A is acceleration, but G is acceleration due to gravity. Very important distinction. Plain old acceleration is A, and acceleration due to gravity is little g. So right off the bat, I know which equation to use because of what they gave me. Here's the little g equation. I always know big G, it's always this number. Little m in this case is the mass of Mars and r is the radial distance between the planet and the person standing on the planet. So it just so happens that that is the radius. If we wanted the acceleration due to gravity like way above the planet, we couldn't use this radius. But since we're looking for the acceleration due to gravity on the surface, we'll just plug the radius right in. So here we go. G equals, oh, this is kind of tough to type in, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times 6.46 times 10 to the 23rd. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's the mass, because it's in kilograms, the mass goes on top. 
and then the radius will go on bottom. Just to make this video quick and smooth, I'm not going to go through the typing in your calculator of this, but we can talk about it after. I'd say only I'd say less than 50% of students can type this in correctly on the first try. So make sure you give it a go. And I'll help you out if you're not getting the right answer. So this is kind of cool to see. Remember, little g on Earth is 9.8. On Mars, it'll be three point, about 3.75. I'm going to go with three sig figs, four sig figs, that is. It's about 3.75. So basically, you would be about one third, between one fourth and one third of your actual current weight on Mars. So if you divide your current weight by three, that's how much you would weigh on Mars. You'd be able to jump higher. And I think you'd actually grow taller, slightly. Gravity makes you a little shorter um, just by pulling you down, compressing your spine a bit. So that's little g. We calculated the acceleration due to gravity. Um, the question B is, how much would a 65 kilogram person weigh on this planet? Pretty important to know what weight is. Um, there's no real way to memorize it better. It just You just got to know. Weight is gravitational force. Gravitational force and weight are the same thing. Let's go look for an equation with Fg so that we can calculate this person's weight. They're 65 kilograms. Here's what we could do. We could go with uh, this. Is, oh, I don't want to keep flipping them around. There's two equations for weight. We have the top one here. We would plug in G. We would plug in the mass of Mars, mass of the person, radius of Mars. But since we already have little g, we're better to use this equation. We would take 3.75, which we calculated in part A, and then we'd take 65 kilograms and plug it in here. So when you have little g, this is a much easier way of calculating weight. Physics is tough. Don't be afraid to throw some questions in the chat. So it's just 60. Oh, I made a mistake. That's for planet Earth. We're on Mars, dude. 3.749 or just 3.75 is fine. We get 243.7. How about some feedback in the chat about that one? I think that one's a little tougher. Five is easy, one is pretty tough, and three is about average, what do you think? I'll give you a second to copy down. All right, a little silent there, that's fine. Let's go to the last one. It's so number four. I'm just going to draw what this problem is asking because I think it's a little confusing. Here's what the real question is. If you, if you place a bowling ball and a billiard ball right next to one another, um, what will be the gravitational force on them? So I'm just going to zoom in. Let's forget about the words for a moment. So basically in this problem, I give you the, the radius of the bowling ball. I give you the radius of the billiard ball. And I give you the mass of each one. I ask you for gravity. So basically, this only works for planets. This is for when you're standing on a planet. And we're asking for the gravity between these two tiny objects, so that's not going to work. We want the gravitational force between these two objects. 
So we're using that equation. Mass is given, I, I, I'll give you the mass of the bowling ball, I'll give you the mass of the billiard ball, but what is the radial distance? What do I do to these two radiuses, these two radii, to get the radial distance, the distance from center to center of those two objects? Please drop it in the chat. I'll ask again in case you missed me. To get the radial distance of these two objects, what do I do with the radii? Radial distance is the center to center distance. I'll, I'll kind of give away the answer. It's, it's this right here. This is the radial distance. So what do I do with the two radii? There's one radii, there's another one. Nobody knows. Very good. We add them together. And that's really it. That's the trick with this problem. Like, Basically, all I'm really trying to show you with this problem is that R is not distance. I mean, not, excuse me, R is not radius. R is the radial distance. R is the distance between the center of this object and the center of this object. So I could take this little piece, add it to this little piece, and I've got it. So here's the whole thing. I'll, I'll just write down all the, well, I'll show you the info. I'll just go up here and circle it. This is all you really need. That's it. Don't even read the rest. Mass is mass is 7.2, so that'll go right here. This mass is 0.38, that'll go here. And then 0.11 and 0.028, we'll add those together. So you could take these, you can add them together off to the side. Let's do that actually. Maybe I'll make that like part A of the problem. Part A of the problem will probably be, what's the radial distance? And you'll just take the radiuses and add them together. So it'll be point, point one one plus, oh, point one three, oh no, excuse me. Oh gosh, oh, point one one plus, oh, point oh two eight. So R will be oh, point one three eight. So there's your radial distance. If you want to label that, you may. Radial distance. And then we plug everything in here. Capital G is always 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. M1 is the mass of the, well, either one, the bowling ball or the billiard ball. Mass of the other one will be 0.38, and the radial distance will be 0.138. And so your answer should be about 9.58 times 10 to the negative ninth. I added another sig fig there. So what that says is kind of unclear, 9.583 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons. It's a very small number and that should be the case. When you put a bowling ball and a billiard ball next to one another, the gravity is not strong enough for them to actually pull towards one another. So it's, it's almost no gravity. It's, it's essentially is no gravity. There's gonna be friction to counteract this. There will be little bends in the floor that will keep it from moving that far. Um, so basically, no gravity. You'll, you need a really large object, like a planet or a star, to really um, feel the gravity from something. So that's about it. In short, the, the point of this problem, you add the radiuses together to get the radial center-to-center -center distance, and then you just use your basic universal law of gravitation to get Fg. And that's about it.